That's how we should start the video. It's just making pipe bombs? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you go on That some would get some of, views. Yeah, I'm sure you'd go on some sort of government list, but I'm already on a government list. Look at this. Look at me. <laughs> When do you remember watching this movie? Like, how old? Okay. The first time I watched this movie, I was in college. <laughs> right, and, really? Yeah, I was a long time. Yeah, it was like a ways away. Because your brother would have... I know we've talked about it. Like, I don't know where he would have seen it. So you saw it as an adult. Yeah. Like, I saw this at like maybe 10 years There's old. There's a lot of curse words in there. Well, I mean, on I watched it on Sci-Fi Channel. Oh, okay. Then back whenever they showed Sci-Fi movies. <laughs> Not kid stuff. <laughs> My uh, parents would leave you with my grandparents and so i would you sneak off watch and watch sci-fi channel nice. back when it was s-c-i-f-i not oh. s-y-f-y oh. they showed that in cube it was really messed up <laughs> that's how i saw all the friday the 13th movies too that explains a lot <laughs> i have a successful youtube channel thank you <laughs> yeah, exactly. i have tens of views <laughs> <laughs> the pacing of the movie the first 20 minutes of this movie is just like they set up the whole rest of the movie you could have seen, if you saw the first 20 minutes, you know exactly what's happening. You see the two main characters and the rest of the town. They've introduced most of the town in the first 20 minutes. Uh-huh. Because there's only, you know, nine people that live there. 14, right. with like the sign Population says. Population 14. Whenever the guy's using the jackhammer. Uh-huh. And he drills it into the ground right into the thing's back. And you see blood come up. Like, the fact that they showed that it could be hurt that quickly. Like, you know that the thing can be hurt. Yeah. You know that it at that point it lives underground, and by the first thirty minutes you realize one of the things you, it's they've killed one of them. Then the whole movie set up by the end of the first act, they're on the rocks and they realize okay the things are listening to us and they're underground. If we stay on these rocks, if we stay up high, they can't get us. And that is that is the movie. That's the movie. Yeah, but then but even after that, it's like you don't get bored. Exactly, because... So it keeps you interested. And I've been questioning, why don't I get bored from this? Why is it so fresh? I think it's because the characters are that are in it. Like, whenever... Uh, the last character death is maybe over half an hour left of the movie. Nestor is the last death of the movie. Wow. The guy getting sucked into the tire. Yep. But it's still tense throughout the rest of it, because right. they've introduced these side characters that you know might die, but they don't. And that's one of the reasons, like, modern horror movies I really don't like the structure of. Because they introduce ten teens, and you say, okay, that one's the dumb girl. She's going to go first. Uh, the smart guy might live to the end. But they just introduce these characters that are all vapid. They have no dimensions to them. Yeah, they have no ideas. And then they just start killing them off one by one. Well, yeah, because then you know you're, it's predictable throughout the whole movie. Bert is really a side character that maybe in other movies wouldn't have lived and he's been like the focus of every other movie since gotcha. this. he's more than just like a gun nut he loves being prepared right he you know whenever they're driving away from the house on the tank yeah, and, and he like realizes crying. yeah he realizes like i've prepared my whole life and it's for nothing right like I, it didn't help at all yeah and like he goes through a, a bit of an arc there and like all the characters go through a bit of an arc every review i've seen of this Everyone always says, oh, it's like a classic monster movie. You know, like the 50s, they would have, you know, Attack of the Ants. Okay. And it would be uh, this small group of people come together to beat the monster. Okay. And this, to me, wasn't that kind of movie. It's more of like a disaster movie, like Poseidon Adventure or Towering Inferno, where it's a group of people, and they're not trying to defeat the monster. They are trying to get away from the situation until they are forced to defeat or overcome what's trapping them in the situation. That's exactly like the Poseidon Adventure. They're just trying to get off the boat. Towering Inferno, they're just trying to get out of the building. And I think that this movie's this is why this movie works so well, is that it's not a monster movie. Nice. It's like a, an earthquake movie almost, where every character is just trying to get to the mountains. But the point that they're they're not trying to defeat the monster. Right. They're trying to get away from everything. Right. And they, they never refer to it as a monster, really. Right, because the lady was like, uh, this is a major zoological discovery. The, the biggest zoological discovery yeah. in the last 100 years. Yeah, exactly. The characters are so well, they work so well together. Like Valentine and Bert are believable friends. 
Yep. Like they bust each other. Yep. They just like, they make fun of each other. One has the cigarettes. One has the lighter. Exactly. It, just, it oh, just works. So perfect. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think what you also have to say is that every character takes a different path to the mountains, I guess. And like you got the Republican couple. Oh yeah. <laughs> With their I love all the diverse groups in this. Latinos. Yep. Latino, uh, you have uh, women. You have single mothers. Yep. Single fathers. Uh, Asians. Uh, Asian. Asian man. Asian man. You have uh, two like working class heroes. Yep. A uh, liberal uh, teacher or liberal <laughs> geology. Yeah, geology student. student. Getting her and PhD. then yeah, you have the two Republicans that are there <laughs> to save the day. <laughs> Okay, so we just did every character ever. Yeah, we tried everything. Yeah, just exactly. everything in this movie we could. Parents, yep. kids, <laughs> loners. Yeah. And so. it all works. I liked all the characters. Even the characters like Nestor, the uh, the guy who falls off the roof and gets eaten through the has no truck good tire. Ideas. He's like a gruff guy. Even they flush him out where he says, if it comes near me, I'll hit it with a 10-pound pickaxe. Right. right. Or a five-pound pickaxe. Yeah, I don't know. Something. I don't know the gauges of pickaxe, but <laughs> they... <laughs> they flush him out too where he he's the guy who's saying yeah let's beat it with brute force and i think that's why this movie again why it works so well huh. why it's a group ensemble it's almost like a play yeah where you have like you know nine characters they're all in one set and they all are uh, reacting to each other it's because there's literally nine different like avenues you could take yeah where you have the republican couple who just want to blow their way out you have the uh val and bert who just want to like run for it the woman who just wants to you know get up on the roof and like why are we even trying to fight it right miguel who's saying why are let's just all stay quiet like why are we trying to exactly the strong point of the movie is that everything that happens is set up before it happens like the soda machine that's squeaky oh yeah he points it out he says i think it's it's breaking a bearing he says that the first 10 minutes of the movie yeah even something simple that I had never picked up on was the scene with the pogo stick uh-huh. and she's jumping and they suck it down. Well, he spits it back out and you know, the, uh, the ending where they're fishing and they have the pipe bomb and it sucks it up and then it spits it out. Right. That didn't just come out of no, they've right. established you from the beginning that that. and even before the pogo stick, um, the generator that gets spit up out yep. of the ground and it's just stuff like that, that, that makes the movie so good. And then uh, even if you think, uh, what was it, Melman or Melvin? Melvin. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, mailman. He, well, yeah, the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> no. Even the scene of like the boy, just like the whole story of the boy who cried wolf. Like you know that's going to happen yeah. at some point because it was set up the entire movie. And then yeah. once it does, it's actually scary. Like right. the moments in this movie where the creatures come out of the ground aren't played as a joke. They're played as this is scary. The people who are building their house, they give a backstory to and they die, you know, five minutes later, but it makes the death more effective yep. to know their story, that they're both out there, they're building a new house, they're starting a life together, and oh, no, they're not. Like, right. <laughs> but, then that, but that goes back to your disaster theme. It's not a, it's, once again, it's not a monster It's movie. just a disaster. It's just a disaster, and they were part of it. Yes. You know? And they were victims of it. Another thing that movies, I've seen movies, I liked monster movies, where the characters, you know, the pipe bomb scene, where they're making pipe bombs on the roof. Other movies don't have that scene. They okay. just they just have pipe bombs. They just have yeah. Just they have just have a, he would have had grenades. I see. And that goes back to the ingenuity of the people. Everyone in this movie has an idea. They contribute to the group getting away. Going back to that is like you knew, like it wasn't actually surprising that he knew how to mix pipe bombs. No, it, you, he because... set, they set it up that he is that he would be the type of person right. that to knows know how to how make to a that. pipe bomb. And so it's not even just like even surprising because I feel like in other movies it would just be like, oh, how do you know that? Well, yes. No, no, you know exactly <laughs> why he knows that. It's because his character is developed. Yeah. The bulldozer bulldozer doesn't just come out of nowhere. Right, or, you already see that at the garbage dump. Or the trailer that they ride in. Yeah. They, you see that too. Yeah, because they're sitting right next to it. And it's just, that stuff doesn't happen in other right. horror movies well, or other scary movies. They like Everybody's idea is drawing from their life. Yes. You know? And that's what's, I think that's And you, they give everyone a backstory. Right. You know, you can you can imagine these people if this wasn't the town wasn't being attacked, what their personalities would be like. Right. Like what they'd be doing even yeah. if the town wasn't attacked. Exactly. Um, the the pickaxe one is actually an interesting one because Lester set that up 
beforehand. Yes. And he was talking and about, then, like, I would just use a five-pound pick ten out, whatever it was, pickaxe. And so then... Uh, Whenever he actually does use a pickaxe. Yeah, it's like, oh, he, that's where he got that idea from. Yes. But he drew it from his life. You know, exactly. From, like, ideas he had heard. <laughs> so it just, like, obviously, it'd be like, everything... In the, that's the thing about this movie is, like, everything in this movie made sense. Yes. <laughs> that could be the that could be the everything, tagline on the poster. Yeah, everything everything makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> it shouldn't. Yeah. Like it doesn't the poster is like Jaws poster with a snake right, right. An underground shark. Right, exactly. it, this movie could have been called Shark's Attack from Underground. It could have been It could have been yeah. <laughs> shark Quake. That would be the sci-fi channel version of this movie Shark Quake. Nice. In the movie they are sitting on the rock. And they're all talking about where they think the the creature is from. Okay, yeah. They say, "Oh, I think it's from space. The government space. made it. Yep. Um, they are. They've always been here, or it's like radiation." What do you think? Why Why are those creatures there? How Man. are they there? Okay, so the not the newest Hulk movie, but like the one before that, that was actually like pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Where is this going? It's pretty bad. <laughs> I think it did have good elements of like the radiation that they experienced actually did affect the animals. And then we like we see that in Godzilla. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what I think I like about this one is that it doesn't answer that. It's just open ended. It's just open ended, yeah. It doesn't like, it, that's that's where it supports the disaster movie right. element it's not a monster movie because like why you would do you don't ask why why an earthquake happens yeah exactly. it just you happens. Do, it happens you just react to it yes yeah so good yeah so i think that i think i really like that it doesn't answer it i am a personal fan of the nuclear fallout uh rained on some worms and those worms just happened to be as long as a bus after that and <laughs> i just like i like that element of the story but i think that like in godzilla they blatantly answer that yeah, where it's it's radiation. Yeah, it's, it was a know, lizard. Yeah, they know what it's from. But in this movie, you just like have no idea, and you're just it's never answered. And I don't even. It know doesn't matter that it answers it right. though. Like you're not like, sitting there wondering. Yeah, yeah, I don't even care. I don't even. Even care. if they did answer it, it'd be like okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, great. <laughs> but what what about Val? What's he gonna do? You know. <laughs> yeah. What, what? I want to see what Bert and Val are doing right, right exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Are they gonna pole vaults into like the town square? <laughs> so what do you think? What do I, where do I think they what come do you from? Think, yeah, what do you think is the cause of the... Well, they seem to be working together, the creatures do. Okay. Maybe this place is so remote that they've just never encountered humans until right then. Or maybe they've encountered humans, but it was like the guy on the uh, electrical tower where the, they chase someone up there or they eat someone and that person's just gone. There's no evidence of them. Right. Because if a person just disappears out in the middle of the desert. Who knows? Yeah, you'd, you'd never be able to find them. And so I like I think I like that idea. I think like that's... they've always been there. They've, they're just creatures that we've never seen before. Right. I don't know how to end these either. I don't know how to begin them we or end them. do a shot of... Just pan out on the goods. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That it's might actually be the perfect ending. <laughs> you know what? Cut, shoot, got it. <laughs> we got everything we're going to get here. <laughs> good movie. Overall, very good movie.